If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Twenty seconds of logo. Hmm. A sin for twenty seconds of logos. And here I thought short logo sequences got a sin removal. That is what your fanboys tell me, after all. Wait, these motherfuckers are still sending Harry back to live with abusive relatives? Five fucking movies in, and honestly, the Hogwarts people are just as bad as Voldemort in my book. Well, fortunately, books don't matter. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It was a layup. Anyway, as explained countless times, the reason Harry returns to the Dursleys is because Petunia is his blood relative and that affords him magical protection from Voldy. If you're going to bring this up in every single video, you could have at least looked up why this happens. A normal person would think there's a reason behind this, but not you. You see something happening over and over and assume there is no method to the madness. There is a reason JK is the second best book series selling author of all time, only behind God. Allegedly. Fat, out-of-shape Dudley can keep up with somewhat athletic Harry while running. Contrary to popular belief, just because someone is fat does not mean they cannot be very athletic. NFL linemen are 3 to 400 pounds on average and still run 5 second 40 yard dashes. I mean, look at this dude. Since when are you able to keep a Patronus on retainer? Are you seriously asking since when has Harry been able to control his Patronus? Since the third book, clown. This is the fifth. Also, it's been two years. Learn how to make a full-fledged Patronus already. The last time you did it, all you had to do was realize that you'd done it before. You remember? During all that time travel rigmarole from the third movie? As explained in the third book, creating a Patronus that has a corporeal animal form requires intense concentration and is difficult for even adult wizards to conjure. It's far easier to conjure formless Patronus charms. How do you know about- Don't Bulldog asked me to keep an eye on you. While you were being beaten and forced to live under the stairs. Something she wouldn't have seen considering the Dursleys made it a point to hide Harry's existence as best they could. And beaten? You know, the movies have never made that explicit, but the books did. So since you are clearly referencing the books, I get to, and Gator don't want to hear no lip about it from here on out. Gator don't play no shit. You, you feel me? Gator never been about that. Never, never been about playing no shit. Did you expect him to let you go wandering around on your own? What is she supposed to do if any evil magic antagonist tries to attack Harry? I watched over Harry like you asked, Dumbledore, but Lucius Malfoy cast a spell I couldn't deflect with my wicker basket. She could contact Dumbledore with any of the more or less instantaneous methods wizards have for communication, and Dumbledore can literally teleport to this location. Was that it? That was easy. The Ministry has received intelligence. You performed the Patronus charm in the presence of a muggle. However, our intelligence did not notice the two Dementors that would have sucked your face off. So you must have been frivolously conjuring Patronus charms for no reason. You are, once again, sinning characterization. The main plot of this movie involves the Ministry's unwillingness to admit Voldemort's return, which necessitates the resurrection of the Order of the Phoenix. Dolores Umbridge sent the Dementors to kill Harry Potter, and her manipulating the Ministry to ignore that Dementors were there is the plot, fool. How the f*** did the Ministry find a witness to testify to Harry using magic outside of school in this instance, but not in any of the previous instances he's done it in basically every other movie? The Ministry didn't find a witness. Dumbledore did. And if you're as dumb as I think you are, when you say witness, you're referring to the Ministry's ability to know underage magic has happened, meaning your use of witness is wrong. And just an FYI, there is a charm on every underage wizard that allows them to detect magic. Dumbledore has persuaded the Minister to suspend your expulsion pending a formal hearing. What? The headmaster of a school has asked a government entity to postpone his student's expulsion so that he may have an opportunity to explain himself in a fair hearing. What part of that didn't you understand? Don't break ranks if one of us is killed. And no one pay any attention to the flying witches and wizards in the middle of a f***ing neighborhood either. So wait, they don't have a chimney or a magic boot or some sh to transport Harry where he needs to go? They just fly around London and say, if muggles see us, f*** them? You're not paying attention to what the film is trying to say. The Order does not trust the Ministry. The flu network and port keys have to be authorized and both are monitored by the Ministry and flying is a way to mitigate this issue. You know what could have been even cooler than this? A magic building not in London that doesn't have anything to do with a regular muggle apartment building. I've just wrapped my head around platform nine and three quarters. How do I wrap my head around this? Abracadabra, I sit on his knee. Presto, change and now he is me. Oh. 
Hocus pocus, we take her to bed. Magic is real. We are dead. Josephine Levine presents Magic, a terrifying love story. Harry is still amazed at shit like this. Dude, did you not see the tent in the last fucking movie? It is absolutely amazing that the guy that literally just asked how can he wrap his head around magic is chastising someone else for being amazed at magic. How the fuck is this possible? Jump scare hug. There isn't a universe in which this was presented as a jump scare. And no, the grain of sand floating around in your skull does not count. Dumbledore made a swear not to tell you anything. So why are Hermione and Fred privy to this super secret knowledge that concerns Harry? First of all, why are you saying Hermione and Fred? Don't you mean Ron? I mean, the reason I asked this is because you spliced footage of Fred and George into Hermione's dialogue, and that footage of the twins came a little bit after Hermione said that line. So what I think happened here is you borked your script and said Fred when you meant Ron, but spliced in footage of the twins to cover your mistake and hope no one would notice. I noticed. And second, Hermione and Ron could be trusted with that knowledge because four movies have taught us one thing about Harry. He is headstrong and will jump into the fray even at risk of death. I mean, you literally said this about Harry in the last video. Why would I go looking for someone who wants to kill me? Oh, I don't know. The events of the last two movies might lead someone to think that. If it wasn't for Harry, we wouldn't even know Voldemort was bad. No shit. And the guy's been in like a thousand adventures that no kid should ever have to go through. And he fought Voldemort. This secret is the most ridiculous thing ever. So your solution to a child going through traumatic experiences is to put them through more trauma? No, your reasoning is the most ridiculous thing ever. Just because you're allowed to use magic now does not mean you have to whip your wands out for everything. If use magic means have sex, then yes, they do. Jeremy thinks penetration is the only way to have sex. That's why his college ex-girlfriend was always so upset. He never found the clip. Good, I want to join. If Voldemort's raising an army, then I want to fight. I guess that's where the conversation ended. There was nothing else to sort out after that. Well, yeah. Sirius is Harry's legal guardian, and they were in accord. What else is there to discuss? Every f***ing person in London is walking down streets far away from this, so they can't witness this telephone elevator. And that's a sin because... Are you suggesting that there should always be people that notice something like this? I'd assume the government arm of a magical community dedicated to the secrecy of that community would place a visitor's entrance to a government building in a place where it's most inconspicuous. I mean, the movie is literally showing you the majority of people stay away from this area, but your response is to suggest that they should be here. This is why I ask you why. You have not justified why this is an issue, only expressed your incredulity. That's what flat earthers do. Also, man, I just can't figure out the physics of this thing. There's an entire extra floor of telephone booth tucked up in the top of this telephone booth? We've said it before, but magic this complex makes you wonder why there are such things as problems in the wizard world. You live in the 21st century, an era where you can sit in a tube that takes you from New York to Italy in eight hours. You also possess a rectangle small enough to fit in your pocket that contains the entirety of human knowledge. To someone in the Middle Ages, all of that would be indiscernible from magic. Somehow, just like the Middle Ages, we still have wars, pandemics that kill millions, and monarchies. This means that most of our problems are not caused by a lack of technology, but by human nature. You think Voldemort looks at this and goes, Oh, well, my Hitler-like crusade for racial dominance has been thwarted because we can conjure phone booths out of thin air. Grow up, Peter Pan. Use of magic chimneys makes you wonder why Harry and Mr. Weasley didn't do this. If the reason is Harry can't use magic, then why was he allowed to fly on a broom earlier? Firstly, flying on a broom is not considered using magic in the Harry Potter universe. The brooms themselves are charmed. This is why a firebolt is faster than a Nimbus 2001. If what you are implying were true, there would be no use in different broom brands. Second, the Order does not trust the Ministry. They monitor the flu network. As we later learn, Umbridge was the one that set up Harry with Dementors. Their suspicion was valid. Interdepartmental memos. We used to use owls. The mess was unbelievable. Why the f*** is the rest of the magic world still using owls? It's... Almost like a paper plane can't carry a book, or a broom, or anything. Not to mention this is indoors. Have you ever tried flying a paper plane in moderately strong winds or rain? Do you even use your head or do you just wear it for looks? So Mrs. Fig is what's known as a squib, a muggle born to wizard parents. But the ministry says muggles can't see dementors. So why does anything she say hold any weight at all? First of all, squibs are not muggles. They are squibs. That's why there's a word for that. And Fig states she can see the Dementors, which may or may not be a lie, 
but she is able to describe their effects accurately, specifically the freezing cold that accompanies their presence. She'd be able to describe that she saw Harry and Dudley running away from something, which even if she couldn't see that something, she'd prove that Harry wasn't conjuring a Patronus for no reason. The odds are astronomical. Someone in a fantasy movie about magic says something is impossible because of the odds. He isn't saying it isn't possible. When someone brings up odds, they are saying it isn't probable. And this, coming from you, rings hollow. You have spent five videos complaining about how things shouldn't be possible in this series, so stop trying to send movies for doing things you are guilty of. Professor. Dumbledore continues to be a dick to Harry even after helping Harry. But he's not being a dick to Harry. Harry is a horcrux, and this is why Harry has a connection to Voldemort and can speak Parseltongue. It is this connection that Dumbledore is attempting to avoid, and why he didn't tell Harry about the Order of the Phoenix. Nobody in this entire busy station is sitting in the waiting room. Well, yeah. If there were, he wouldn't have transformed there and would have found somewhere else where people weren't, so you could complain about that. Duh. Nothing's pulling the carriage, Harry. It's pulling itself, like always. Which would be reasonable in a magic movie, but of course invisible horses are pulling this carriage, and now they have to throw this only people who have seen death can see them wrinkle into the story. I really can't keep up with your incredulity. One moment you're complaining about the logistics of a magical tent, demanding an explanation, and the next you're saying a cart pulling itself is reasonable without one because the movie is about magic. There are more flip-flops here than the red light district in Thailand. I can see them too. Harry and the gang just happened to meet a student that did not exist the first four Harry Potters and who also has seen death and can see the Thestrals. Which is why she's in the movie. What part of movies show you things that are important and wouldn't if they weren't, don't you understand? You don't understand. Then help us too. Well, I would, but Dumbledore made me swear not to tell you. Guess we're even now, huh? Jeremy yells at Hermione cliche. Flying owl signifies the passage of time cliche. Where the hell is this considered a cliche? You mean this only happens in this series? Hmm, I wasn't aware something you did could be considered cliche if you invented it. They're called pestrels. 43 minutes into this movie, what's the real conflict? Sure, Dolores Umbridge is a total whore and some people don't like Harry, but that's what we call the B story. A story hasn't cropped up yet. The movie is called The Order of the Phoenix. The order was established in the first 10 minutes. Dolores is this film's main antagonist. She was established in the first 24 minutes. The order and the ministry are adversaries in a proxy war against Voldemort. That is the conflict of this story. This dude is waiting for a bus that passed him almost an hour ago. We Americans get widely criticized for the portions restaurants serve and how much we waste food, but the Harry Potter universe is filled with huge plates of uneaten food. Where does it all go when the kids are done? As explained in chapter seven, page 124 of The Sorcerer's Stone, leftover food magically disappears. Oh, and by the way, get over it, British weirdos that are upset that I'm calling it the Sorcerer's Stone. That's what the movie and the book are called here. Suck my dick. Like, you don't see me getting angry that you guys pronounce aluminum aluminium randomly. You know, the original word was aluminum. You guys added aluminium, aluminium. The fuck that shit sounds like a venereal disease. I don't know. Then you get mad when we don't pronounce our H's. Like, you go... Oh, there's an H in the word herb. Herb? Are you serious? It's herb. It's French. Drop the H, clowns. No, but Birdman, there's there's an H there. Uh, yeah, there's also one in our and honor. And you don't pronounce them shits either, so shut the fuck up. Merely your medieval methods. Professors would never have this argument in the full view of students in the middle of a heavily trafficked area. Says who? You? You didn't go to school. Things at Hogwarts are far worse than I feared. Why is she suddenly turning to address the large group of eavesdropping students? To show dominance over Minerva, the literal point of the scene? To address the seriously falling standards at Hogwarts School. The ministry is being portrayed as the bad guys here, but yeah, has anyone ever learned anything at that school? Harry learned how to do a Patronus charm two years ago, something that literally saves his life in this movie. Ron learned how to levitate objects first year, something that saved them from the troll. Fred and George literally demonstrate they are experts at apparition in this movie. Should I go on or are you thoroughly embarrassed? You've been in this post how long exactly? Aw, oh, that poor nice Trelawney, getting grilled over her worthlessness. I'd hate to see her go. Worthless? You mean the woman who literally made a prediction that caused the events of Harry Potter's life to go into motion? That woman? Professor! Whatever Dumbledore's reason is for ignoring Harry, he's unwittingly creating a new Voldemort. 
What the hell is wrong with this guy? You made this video in 2014, seven years after the last book was released, and seven years after this movie was released. Stop pretending you don't know why Dumbledore is doing what he's doing. Professor Dumbledore! Also, these assholes couldn't have told him, Listen, Harry, Dumbledore has to ignore you this year because of a big, scary, important magic thing that you'll learn more about later. But it definitely doesn't mean that he hates you, as it probably feels when no one explains this to you. See? He knows why. Some 40-year-old dude tells cringe sexual jokes and lies to me for 20 minutes. Ha 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 How the hell is this entertaining? She's taking over the entire school. So far, this movie should have been called Harry Potter and the Really, Really Bad Teacher Nobody Liked. He's so close. He's so close to getting that's the conflict of this film. Have we ever seen these f***ing kids sitting around just listening to the radio news? Those of us who've read the books, yes, we have in Chamber of Secrets. Why do you ask? No, we have not because we have not as of yet needed such a cheap way to have our main characters learn crucial information. Oh, I see. You're inventing things to be mad about. Is this really a problem with the Order of the Phoenix Cinema Sins? These kids still read newspapers. It's the 90s. No one cares. Oh, look. He does use the fireplace phone again. I stand corrected. But I do not stand corrected on the fact that it's still just an easy deus ex machina for communication that comes and goes at the whim of the writer. No, 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 no. You're getting five sins for this nonsense. You don't want to remove a sin for a mistake you made in the previous video, and on top of that, you're calling a method of communication a deus ex machina. That's quite possibly your worst usage of that phrase, considering you have made it explicitly clear you think a deus ex machina is someone being saved. Like, who's even being saved here? Is it true you can produce a Patronus charm? Yes, I've seen it. Blimey, Harry. I didn't know you could do that. How did you not know that? The entire Magical Kingdom has been gossiping about Harry and his formal trial for using a Patronus charm in front of a muggle this entire school year. I'm not even surprised that you're just making things up at this point. The school has not been gossiping about Harry's trial. The gossip was about the Ministry smearing Harry for suggesting Voldemort has returned. Most of the kids don't even know about Harry's trial. The room requirement only appears when a person has real need of it, and is always equipped for the seeker's needs. So, it's a holodeck. And if it is? You sit in holodecks, bro? How can you practice a spell and not have the spell's effect happen? Like, do you start by saying, Wand Siri, this is just a practice spell, or something like that? How are the magical forces supposed to know you really don't mean it this time as opposed to other times? Because, as explained many times, the magic comes from the wizard, not the wand. The wizard would have to will the magic into existence. It doesn't come from just waving a wand around. And I'm making this video before Fantastic Beast 3 comes out to negate what I just said. I'm still pissed about Accio Niffler. <laughs> Hermione's victory over Ron gets celebrated as this woman conquers man sort of thing, but don't we already know that Hermione is better than most of all the rest of her fellow students? Nobody was thinking of it in those terms, least of all the film. This was a comedic showdown of the two deuteragonists who also happened to like each other. What, did he just do that spell for her? Neither of them said a spell word, so how did the wand know what was required of it? Wasn't it confused by having two masters at once? All Harry did was correct the witch's form. She produced the magic. Again, the magic comes from the witch, stupid. Believing in yourself. Whoa, Harry, have you thought about maybe dating this girl right here? I mean, I like Cho and Ginny Weasley as much as the next guy, but you might be overlooking someone. No, we aren't going to skip over the fact that this adult is yet again fawning over children. I will attempt to penetrate your mind. You will attempt to resist. Prepare yourself. I'm not going to tell you how to resist, but resist, damn you. It's a matter of willpower, my dude. Do you really need someone to tell you how to resist someone reading your mind? Wait, don't answer that. And don't think I forgot about you stating quite clearly that Legilimens, someone who can read minds, has never been introduced in the Harry Potter series back in your Fantastic Beasts video. Legilimens? Mm, yeah, but I always have trouble with your kind, Brits. Legilimens is someone who can read minds, someone that was never once introduced in the entire world of Harry Potter before now. Probably because, like the Time Turner, they were all burned in some fire or some That video came out three years after this one, so either you're dishonest or Akira Toriyama. So wait, is Snape still in Harry's mind? What the hell happened? Snape just knocked Harry and us into next Christmas. Another scene manipulation. They explicitly show Snape exiting Harry's mind, and then the scene transitions. Let him chill him out. <laughs> Concentrate, Potter. Focus. My mother did that after I ran away. These movies and their tragic character backstories. Everyone's got a sob story. Harry's parents died. Sirius's mother was abusive. Hermione's parents are muggles. Ron's family is poor. So the sin here is that the characters of the story are fleshed out. Okay, but how is Hermione's parents being muggles a tragic backstory? That's racist. 
Bit of fresh air, you know. Oh, yes. As gamekeeper, fresh air must be difficult to come by. Whoa, touche. Dolores Umbridge would be amazing at CinemaSense. You guys get mad at me for sending CinemaSins, but they just admitted one of the most despicable and evil characters in all of fiction would fit in at CinemaSins. I'm the hero here. <laughs> also, Bellatrix Lestrange, who we just heard about a few minutes ago, somehow survives this massive explosion in her sector. The first part of this sin was unnecessary information. What does the fact that we just learned about Bellatrix a few minutes ago have to do with her surviving an explosion? And beyond that, you're saying a massive explosion, but you're leaving out this explosion was entirely to set her free, meaning of course it wouldn't kill her. This man literally thinks this was random. Dumbledore's got style. Wow, way to take one of the few black characters in these movies and make him a walking stereotype. Says the guy that tried to pretend like he couldn't understand him at the beginning of this video. And since when is a black man saying someone's got style a stereotype? Dude, I am black, and that thought never crossed my mind. Control your emotions. Discipline your mind. So apparently these lessons are like Luke believing in the Force or something? There's really no significant tip or trick to controlling your mind, you just have to do it. Almost like willpower is something you can't teach. Harry's dad is addicted to Snape, causing Snape to be addicted to everyone forever. Causality. Action. Reaction. Cause. And effect. Umbridge lets herself be fooled into walking way out into the haunted woods with the two students she's been the most suspicious about from day one. That's because you didn't show why she's out here. Umbridge has been obsessed with taking out Dumbledore and Hermione used her obsession against her. Tell her, Harry! Tell me what? Well, if you won't tell her where it is, I will. Where what is? Dumbledore's secret weapon. See this? This is the face your college ex-girlfriend would have made. Tell them I mean no harm! I'm sorry, Professor. I must not tell lies. Irony. CinemaSins sends one of the coldest scenes in the franchise because, for some odd reason, they think irony is a bad thing. Which is ironic. So how are we going to get to London? We fly, of course. Of course! But with Umbridge being taken prisoner, and probably much worse than that by centaurs, why don't you use the flu network now? There is no one in charge at Hogwarts anymore. But there still is at the Ministry. How can this man watch a movie where the major plot point was Harry did underaged magic and still not get that the Ministry was the one monitoring this? No one in London who watches the sky for leisure notices this shit. Well, they wouldn't see the Thestrals anyway, but I doubt they'd see 15-year-old kids at what looks like a height of 1,200 feet in dense fog. It's got your name on it. Random crystal ball with crucial clues to the rest of the series just happens to be found by Neville while they search for Sirius. Okay, and? What the hell is your point? Neville is one of the heroes of the series. Are you saying he should be useless? Wouldn't you send them for even bringing him in that case? Why the disguise? Any reason for that at all? Well, considering Lucius hasn't come out of the closet as a Death Eater yet. I'll hand me the prophecy. How did Voldemort know for sure that the visual clues he gave Harry would send him to the Ministry of Magic? Because Voldemort is smart as f Prophecies can only be retrieved by those about whom they are made. So that makes this large collection of prophecies located in the Ministry of Magic in a dark room where no one can find them virtually worthless. Or exceedingly secure? Making things that literally tell the future difficult to attain is kind of the point, is it not? Also, this story takes a page out of the Prophecy Handbook by not explaining who makes them, who they're for, or how accurate they are. Another bold-faced lie. Professor Trelawney is a seer. She is explicitly stated to have made the prophecy regarding Harry. You just haven't been paying attention. Get away from my blood, son. Hell yeah, there's nothing like a good old-fashioned punch when the principals involved can perform magic. I don't know, man. You put a gun in my hand and ask me which would be more satisfying, shooting or punching my enemy, I'm punching him every time. Then shooting him, of course. Bellatrix is the only wizard witch of the whole bunch during this entire fight to remember the killing curse. Avada Kedavra is an illegal curse, which means no one on the Order is likely to use it. This limits the potential users to the Death Eater side, and the narrative reason only Bellatrix uses it here is to show that she is the most hardcore of the group. It serves a purpose, is what I'm saying. She killed him. She deserves it. Voldemort is right. Jeremy sends something he likes, cliche. Now this is f***ing thrilling. This puts anything in any of Lucas's prequels to shame. This is how you stage and film a big showdown duel. It's just too bad about the two hours you had to sit through to get to this moment. Jeremy sends something he likes, cliche. By distancing myself from you, you might be more protected. Bullshit reason for not telling Harry obviously important details is bullshit. 
but he was clearly right. You just sat through a sequence that demonstrated Voldemort was successful in reading and controlling Harry's mind, which manipulated him into a trap. He almost died. The only thing bullshit here is that you got nearly 10 million views on this video, and I'm the first to call you out on this shit. What the hell, Sean, Jay, and Silent Bob vids? Says the guy that tries to pretend like he couldn't understand him at the beginning of this movie. Uh, video. Because, as was explained many times, the magic comes from the wa- Uh, the wand. Jesus, I fucked up. <laughs> There's plenty of words with a silent H. I mean, you got heiress, heirs, hourly, honestly, heirlooms, homage, hors d'oeuvres. Well, they wouldn't see the Thestrals anyway, but I doubt they'd see 15-year-old kids at what looks like a height of 120 feet. 120, Jesus, 100, 100. What's wrong with you? <clears throat> Honorable, honorific, honorarium, hourglass. Well, they wouldn't see the Thestrals anyway, but I doubt they'd see 15 year old kids at what looks like a height of 100, 100, 1200. And don't even let me get started on the H's that you guys dropped that nobody else does. I mean, you guys are well known for hello, love. Hello, what the fuck is hello? It's not jello. It's hello. Hello. <sighs> Can you smell my breath over the microphone? Hello. The fuck is hello? Under my umbrella. Ella. Ella. A. A. In second, Hermione and Ron could. In second, Hermione and Ron could. In second, Hermione and Ron could. Hermione. Hermione. Fuck, I hate this fucking name. Who comes up with a name like Hermione? Like you should be stoned and and buried up until your neck for coming up with the name Hermione. What kind of fucking name is Hermione? She could have been Sally. She could have been Susie. She could have been Brittany. She could have been, I don't know, Jessica. Hermione, seriously? You got Harry, you got Ronald, and Hermione. What kind of fucking name is that? And don't even, don't even give me no shit about, oh, you guys created the language. First of all, this language is a bastardized version of German and Latin and French and all other kind of fucking languages. It doesn't even make sense, okay? And there are plenty of things that we created that you guys just like totally took off the fucking rails. I mean, we invented the elevator. You decided to call it a lift. How fucking simplistic. You call the thing what it does. What's next? You're gonna call clothes wares? I think they already do that. Well, technically, elevator is kind of what it does. It elevates, right? <laughs> Who cares? God damn it. Lyft is far more simplistic. It's like a child made that name. Don't give me no shit, Stan. Stay the fuck out of this. Ours is far more elegant. God damn it. 